Today we're taking a look at this beautiful PowerBook 540C from 1994, one of the best laptops that Apple ever released. It featured an incredible mix of features and performance for the time, as well as several firsts. Not just for Apple, but for the entire computer industry. Unfortunately, like many, mine has fallen victim to that perpetual and relentless enemy of 90s plastics. Age. So today, let's see if we can take this otherwise pristine piece of computing history and make it whole again with a little help from modern technology and then see if we can add some upgrades to make this the ultimate 68K PowerBook. So stay tuned. Introduced in May of 1994, the 500 series PowerBooks pioneered a number of new and innovative features for Apple. They were the first PowerBooks with trackpads instead of trackballs, and the first laptops ever with the modern configuration of the trackpad underneath the keyboard. They were the first with the PCMCIA slot, the first with built-in Ethernet, and the first with stereo speakers. And they also introduced dual swappable battery bays, which could provide up to four hours of runtime, which was excellent for that time, and it let you swap batteries on the fly with the machine running. And these were also quite powerful. The 500 series being the first power books with the 68040 processor using the low powered LC version. And the 540C here paired all of this power with this absolutely beautiful 9.5 inch active matrix display with 16 bit color at 640 by 480. Unfortunately, for all of the forward thinking tech crammed into this plastic case, it's the case itself that lets this machine down. The hinge is almost comically poorly engineered being anchored entirely in the plastic itself. And this means that over time, 100% of these machines will fail at the hinge, which then puts the display cable and sensitive components at risk of damage. In fact, the cable can easily fall out of its socket when the hinge is loose, which can then damage the socket itself. Fortunately, given the inevitability of broken hinges, clever enthusiasts have created excellent 3D printable hinge replacements, which can completely fix the issue. And I first saw this hinge on one of my favorite channels, This Does Not Compute, where Colin had an equally weak hinged PowerBook 145B. He repaired it with the 3D printed support and it seemed rock solid afterwards. And thank you, Colin, for generously allowing me to use some of the footage from your fix here today. And the hinge fix designs for both Colin's PowerBook 100 series and my 500 series were made by the same person, Gregor House on Thingiverse, which I'll link to both below. And it's just such an elegant and relatively easy fix to bring these amazing machines back to life. Now, my hinge support here is printed in PETG, which is stronger than the standard 3D printing PLA and should hold up much stronger to the stresses of opening and closing the lid. So special thank you to friend of the channel, Ed from edretrotech.com, which I'll link down in the description below. And he sent a very nice note along with the 3D printed part, wishing me good luck repairing this PowerBook hinge. And he also sent me my logo for Action Retro here printed very nicely, which actually I've had hanging here in my little studio room for a couple weeks now. And yeah, thank you very much, Ed. But before we go on, today's PowerBook shenanigans are brought to you by Skillshare. As you've probably figured out from watching these videos, I'm not exactly a professional cinematographer. So when Skillshare gave me access to their online learning community, I was quite impressed by the depth of content available. Everything from filmmaking to graphic design to web development. The first thing I did was dive into YouTube success, script shoot and edit with MKBHD, who's easily one of my favorite tech YouTubers. And honestly, I got a ton out of these short hands-on lessons about planning visuals, shooting and editing footage. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. And after that, it's only around $10 a month. So check it out. And now, back to the Mac. Okay, let's disassemble this PowerBook and put this hinge fix in there. Okay, so first I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the plastic cover here and disconnect the screen. 
so that this cable doesn't rip because it is right up on that other piece of plastic in here. And that puts way too much pressure on this thin plastic cable. And we just have to be very careful about all of these delicate cables going all over the place in here and make sure that we disconnect everything. All right, so there is the front casing removed. And there's the screen. And yeah, you can see the posts here that just got completely annihilated and uh, yeah, disintegrated around where the screws need to go. So both these posts and then this one post here, this whole screen was hanging on by just a single post right there. So following the original thread on 68K MLA, which I'll link below, we have to remove all of this stuff from the top casing, well, at least the screen itself and the board down here. And then we actually have to make some modifications to the casing itself so that we can fit this in place. I think we also have to snip a little bit out of here since it doesn't account for a, a standoff that centers the screen here. So now what we have to do to get this in place is remove some of the surviving structure in here. And then this kind of slides right into place and takes their place and has the screw holes to screw the hinge back onto. So I'm not exactly looking forward to this, but it's for the greater good and this is already destroyed. So it's not like we're really making it worse. Okay, so I ran into a little bit of an issue here. In the 68K MLA thread, the creator of this bracket notes that he forgot to leave space for these two posts here, which center the screen. So on his print, he just cut that out with scissors. Now I tried to do the same thing here with this print, but it actually shattered the plastic. And I fixed it with some super glue and paper and it seems pretty strong, but I don't know if I trust it. So what I did was I modified his original design to include cutouts for the two posts here. And I also shortened this ever so slightly so that it fits in here a lot better. So I printed this in ABS plastic, which I think is gonna be perfectly strong enough. And uh, I'll link to my modified STL file on Thingiverse in the description below. All right, yeah, fits perfectly and all the holes line up again and uh, kind of snaps into place above the bracket here. So yeah, that's pretty good. I think what I'm gonna do is just give this a couple dabs of super glue on the back here, just to help hold that in place. And then let's get this screen back together. Oh yeah, look how perfectly that goes together. Okay, so the hinges are loose in the base of the machine, so I'm gonna take this the rest of the way apart and see if I can tighten these up from the inside before we put the screen back on. Okay, well, it's actually only this one screw here to tighten this, so yeah, pretty easy. All right, and while we have the keyboard off, we might as well swap out this hard drive for something more modern. This is a SCSI to SD PowerBook Edition, which uh, will fit in here quite nicely. Okay, so the hard drive is here, and we'll have to take out yeah, a bunch of screws to get to it. All 
Okay, so here's our original 320 meg hard drive. Funny enough, built by IBM. And now we can hook up our SCSI to SD here. All right, there we go. Our brand new solid state PowerBook 540. And then under here, we can see our interesting looking memory, which is unique to the PowerBook 500 series. And ours is made by Kingston. So this has been upgraded by some loving previous owner. So here is the unique memory that the 500 series takes. This is a 16 megabyte module. This could take up to a 32 megabyte module, which would have the other side of this populated, which combined with the four megs of RAM built into the motherboard gives us a maximum possible 38 megs of RAM, which I definitely would like to find a 32 megabyte RAM module. Yeah, so one more issue here is this. There used to be two clips here that held this front part of the bottom bezel down to the two screws in the hinge mechanism here, but that plastic has long since disintegrated. So I'm gonna probably try to figure out something I can 3D print and glue back in there to hold this down. But until then, I'm gonna do the professional route and use some double-sided tape to just hold this bottom bezel down. All right, well, here we are back together with a once again, mostly functional hinge, although I have to say, I don't entirely trust it. It does work, it opens and closes and actually <laughs> latches once again, which is quite nice. So yeah, definitely a worthwhile fix to do and I can now use this laptop again without fear of breaking the thin plastic ribbon cable for the screen here. But yeah, let's, uh, let's power this on, get an operating system installed on the SCSI to SD and have a working 540C again. All right, since there's no operating system on the SD card, we're gonna boot off of this Jazz drive, which has, I think, system 753 on it. All right, well, the good news is everything works. The screen works, the hinge works, and it sees the SCSI to SD. The bad news is system 753 only sees two gigs out of the 16 but we're gonna go ahead and initialize it anyway. So I couldn't just leave the front bezel broken and falling apart like that. So I designed these 3D printed bezel clips, which fit into the original bezel. And you see this one has a little bit of the structure remaining, but if you cut out the inside structure and just leave these two tabs here, this is gonna fit perfectly in this spot here. And then give you the clip at the end that you can actually screw through to hold this in place. So all we have to do is just cut off the remaining broken plastic here and then we'll just glue these clips in place. I tried to leave enough surface area in the design here to glue into place and uh, account for the little lip that's on there. So I think this should have a pretty good bond. And just like thermal paste, I use way too much super glue. All right, so here they are installed and they are pretty solid. And I've already put these up on Thingiverse, so if you have your own PowerBook 500 series, the 520 or the 540, most likely these clips are failing on yours as well, so hopefully these 3D prints can help you out. All right, these are holding the bezel in place pretty well. No more loose falling apart plastic. So I'm certainly glad I made these.
and let's see how well the bottom plastic goes on now. Hopefully this won't just fall off anymore. Yeah, there we go. Clicked into place and everything. So yeah, it's not perfect. I think I need to replace one of the clips on this bezel itself, which I do have the stuff for, but this is a hundred times better than it was when I got it. Okay, well, for some reason, Drive Setup did not want to deal with this SCSI to SD. So instead, what I did was I copied the disk image from a backup from the cursed Mac using DD straight to the SD card, and it worked. We have Mac OS 8.1 and all the stuff that's on the cursed Mac now on this PowerBook 540C, and that's pretty cool. And that also means we have a bunch of videos so we can test out the very nice speakers built into this multimedia laptop. There she is. There she is. Ah! She'll collapse the captain. Not enough against their shields. Debate the starboard. Scotty. I need warp speed in three minutes or we're all dead. Well, video plays extremely well on here, and these speakers sound pretty good. Not bad for a 1994 laptop, and thank you to Cornica.org for providing video files formatted for old machines to play nicely. So check that out if you have an old machine you want to play some videos like this on yourself. Okay, so that'll do it for the PowerBook 540C. This is an incredible little laptop way ahead of its time, and it introduced a lot of the firsts that we really take for granted today, even though the hinge is kind of comically poorly engineered, and I still don't totally trust it, even though we really beefed it up with that 3D printed bracket, plus the little tabs that I created to hold this bottom bezel in place. And it seems pretty nice and certainly way better than it was before. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more Macintosh shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Justin, Greg from Hrutke Mods, Chris, Sorta Eclectic, Connor, and Spike, who are my highest tiered patrons, and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.